Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Block Podcast. Today is Saturday, June 23rd, 2018. Today I'm going to recap the first round of the NHL draft, go over all the FIFA action from yesterday, look ahead to today and tomorrow morning's action as well, talk about the big elimination game and the College World Series today, which the winner moves on to the final and the loser goes home, and go over all the baseball action from yesterday and look ahead to today's action as well. Here we go. First round NHL draft. A lot of picks went as expected. Some of them were steals and others were stretches to say the least. Sabres took Rasmus Dahlin, 8+. plus. He's a franchise player in the making. Hurricanes did the right thing, not trading the pick and picking Andre Chesnikov. I'd give them an A for that. Montreal Canadiens, Jesperi Kotkiemi. I give that a C because there are better players on the board like Brady Tuchuk and Philip Zadina. I know Kotkiemi was a fast riser heading in to the draft, but I think he should have been picked between picks, say, 9 and 10 rather than in the top three. Four Ottawa Senators, Brady Tuchuk, I gave that an A+. Plus. This is a team that's rebuilding. They're probably going to trade Eric Carlson. They traded Mike Hoffman away. And Craig Anderson's on the market as well. So great pick for Ottawa. Five Arizona Coyotes. Barrett Hayton, I thought this was a stretch. I gave it a C. Detroit Red Wings, Philip Zadina, that's a steal. I give that an A+. Plus. The Vancouver Canucks, Quinn Hughes, I give that an A+. Quinn's brother Jack is going to be the number one overall pick in next year's draft in all likelihood. He's a franchise-changing defenseman. Eight, the Chicago Blackhawks, Adam Boquist. I give that a B-. I thought there were better defensemen on the board. And Oliver Wallstrom was on the board, too. The Rangers take Vitaly Kravstov. I give that a C+, plus because they passed up on a couple of pretty good defensemen, Noah Dobson and Oliver Wallstrom. And Evan Bouchard, so three good players they passed up on. Kravstov, I think, will be a solid player. He reminds me a lot of current Ranger Matsukarello. Has a 60-point capability. But I think they could have traded down to 12 to take Kravstov. I know the Oilers were rumored for him at 10, and the Islanders liked them as well as Dallas. So I could see why the Rangers took Kravstov there. 10, the Oilers, Evan Bouchard, that's an A+. They finally filled the need of a right-handed shot defenseman. 11, Islanders, Oliver Wallstrom, A+. That's a steal, and as well as Noah Dobson with the 12th pick from the Calgary Flames. I give that an A+, as well. Two possible cornerstone players right there. 13, the Dallas Stars took Ty DeLandria. That was a reach. I gave that a C. There are better centers on the board. And I thought that the Stars had a bigger need on the fence as well. 14, the Flyers from the Blues. Joel Farabee, I gave that pick an A. That was a very good pick. Farabee is going to be a good player in the league. 15, the Panthers. Grigori Denisinko, I gave that a B. I just thought there were better options for them on the board. There instead of Denisinko, although I do think Denisinko is going to be a solid player. 16, the Colorado Avalanche, Martin Caught, I give that a B plus, solid player. He's going to be a good goal scorer in the league. The New Jersey Devils at 17, Ty Smith, I give that an A. They got a steal there. They have a bigger need on defense rather than offense. You can make a case for that. With the emergence of Taylor Hall, I think you could totally argue that they have a bigger need on defense. So, good pick by the Devils. 18, the Columbus Blue Jackets, Liam Foudy. I give that a C plus. I thought that was a little bit of a reach. 19, the Philadelphia Flyers, Jay O'Brien. I give that a B. I love O'Brien, but I think that was a semi-reach there. 20, the Los Angeles Kings, Rasmus Kapari. I give that an A minus. And back to the Flyers for a second with O'Brien. I know the Kings liked O'Brien at 20. This is sort of like the Rangers scenario with Kravstov, in which the teams behind them like the player, so I can see why they did it. In Philly's case, the Kings, I know, liked O'Brien, as well as Ottawa and Anaheim and even San Jose. So I can see why the Flyers did that. 
Back to Kupari. Very solid pick for Los Angeles. I gave that an A-. minus. San Jose takes Ryan Merkley. He's the biggest boomer bust prospect in this draft class. I give that a B plus. I think the Sharks can afford to take a risk like that. 22, the Rangers from Pittsburgh via Ottawa. The Rangers traded up from 26 to 22 to take Keandre Miller. I give that pick a B. I like Miller. I know San Jose really liked Miller, but instead they go with Merkley. I know the Ducks and the Wild had their eyes on Miller as well as the Toronto Maple Leafs. So solid pick by the Rangers to trade up because I don't think Miller would have been there at 26. 23, the Anaheim Ducks. Isaac Lundstrom, I give that a B-. minus. I like Lundstrom, but there are some better options out there like Saran Noel, Dominic Bach perhaps. That I think were better fits rather than better players for Anaheim. Number 24, the Minnesota Wild. Philip Johansson, I thought this was the worst pick of the first round. Give this a D. There are better defensemen on the board. Jared McIsaac was on the board still. Kalen Addison was on the board still. Philip Johansson, to me, was a late second. So I give the Wild a D solely because there were better options on the board. And they could have even gone offense and went with Dominic Bach. And speaking of Dominic Bach, the St. Louis Blues traded up from... 29 to 25 to take him. I give that an A for the Blues. He fit in really nicely with that team. And I think he could be in the league sooner rather than later. Ottawa trades down from 22 to 26 to take Jacob Bernard Docker. I give that a D. They're a better defenseman on the board than Bernard Docker. Sort of like the Wild taking Johansson. You had Kalen Addison still there. Jared McIsaac still there. Matthias Samuelson still was on the board. Bode Wild was still on the board. There are four better defensemen than Bernard Docker still left on the board for Ottawa to choose from. 27, the Chicago Blackhawks. Nicholas Budine, C-. minus. I give them, like I said here, better defensemen on the board. 28. Nils Lundqvist, it's funny that they have Nils Lundqvist with Lundqvist with the K, and then they have Henrik Lundqvist, their goalie, and he is with the Q rather than a K. And then the Rangers have a Lindqvist on their team too, so they have Lindqvist, Lundqvist with the Q, and then Lundqvist with the K. And I give this pick a B-. minus. I thought they were better defensemen on the board, but I like Lundqvist, but I had other defensemen rated higher, so I give the pick a B-, minus. I thought. Lundqvist was a better prospect than the guys Ottawa and Chicago took with the previous two picks. So I give the Rangers a B minus for that. 29, the Maple Leafs who traded down from 26 to 29. Rasmus Sedin, I give them a B plus for that pick. That was another good defenseman still left on the board. 30. The Red Wings from the Vegas Golden Knights. Joe Valino, that's an A+. Plus. What a steal. I thought Valino could have gone as high as number 11 to the Islanders. And 31, the Washington Capitals. Alexander Alexiev, another solid defenseman, left on the board at Ottawa or Chicago or even the Rangers could have taken in that 26-28 range. Alexander Alexiev, B+. Plus. I gave the Capitals very good pick. And I'm interested to see the picks that go in the second and third rounds and beyond, and who, like, where Bold Wild goes, where does Kalen Addison go? So, they are some options on the board, and I'm going to go over the rest of the draft on tomorrow's podcast, and I'll give you my favorite picks from rounds two to seven. And on Monday's podcast, I'm going to do grades for every team in the NBA and NHL for this weekend's performances in the draft. Now I'm going to move on and talk about the FIFA World Cup a little bit. Switzerland defeated Serbia 2-1 to in Group E play. Big three points there for uh, Switzerland. Serbia actually got on the board first on a goal by Alexander Mitrovic in the fifth minute to give themselves a 1-0 lead early. Granik Za in the 52nd minute ties it up at one apiece. And 
Exerton Sequiri in the 90th minute gives Switzerland a 2-1 lead. And that was a huge win for Switzerland as they earn a couple big points. Nigeria defeated Iceland 2-0 in Group D play. Two goals by Ahmed Musa, one in the 49th minute and one in the 75th minute, gives Nigeria a 2 nothing win. Belgium defeated Tunisia 5-2 in Group G play this morning. A lot of goals in this game. Eden Hazard in the 6th minute on the penalty kick, one nothing Belgium. Romelu Lukewu in the 16th minute, 2 nothing Belgium. Dylan Braun got Tunisia on the board in the 18th minute. Romelu Lukalu in extra time in the first half, giving Belgium a 3-1 lead. Second half, Eden Hazard again in the 51st minute, makes it a 4-1 game. Mickey Batsui 5-1, and Wabi Kazari in extra time got Tenencia within 5-2. 11 o'clock on Fox, we have South Korea and Mexico. Should be an interesting game there. Give me Mexico there to get a big win. And also Group F play Germany and Sweden. 2 o'clock on Fox. Give me Germany to get a big win there. And tomorrow morning, I'm not getting up at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning to pick England and Panama. That's 8 o'clock on FS1. Group G play. Give me England to get a big win. To get a big three points there. Now I want to talk about the College World Series a little bit. Yesterday, Oregon State defeated Mississippi State 12-2 the force. A big elimination game in which the winner moves on to the final to face Arkansas. And the loser goes home. Mississippi State has good pitching, but not yesterday. Oregon State is a big home run hitting team. Arkansas has defeated Florida 5-2. To reach the final. And I do think Oregon State will get the win tonight. I'm going to pick that towards Maddie's picks. As it will be Oregon State against Arkansas in the College World Series final next week. Should be a lot of fun. Now I'm going to go over Major League Baseball action from yesterday. And look ahead to today's games. I'm not going to go through the scoring, but I'll go over all the scores and give out the winning pitcher, the losing pitcher, and who gets the save if the save was necessary. The Phillies defeated the Nationals 12-2, a big statement win for Philadelphia as they improve the 40-33. Washington drops the 40-34. Zach Eflin improves the 5-2. Tanner Rorick drops the 3-8. The Diamondbacks defeated the Pirates 2-1 as they improve to 42-33. The Pirates drop the 36 and 39. This went 13 innings. Andrew Trafine improves the 1 and 2. Tyler Glasson drops the 1 and 2. TJ McFarlane gets his first save of the year. Game 1 of a doubleheader between the Athletics and the White Sox. The A's killed the White Sox 11 to 2 as they improved the 39 and 36. Chicago drops the 24 and 50. Sean Maniah improves the 7 and 6. James Shields drops to 2 and 9. The Rays defeated the Yankees 2 to 1 as they improved to 35 and 40. The Yankees dropped to 15 and 23. Ryan Yarbrough improves to 6 and 3. CeCe Sabathia drops to 4 and 3. Sergio Romo gets his fifth save of the year. The Red Sox defeated the Mariners 14 to 10 as they improved to 51 and 46. Seattle drops to 46 and 30. Matt Barnes improves to 1 and 2. Juan Nicasio drops to 1 and 4. The Indians defeated the Tigers 10-0 as they improved to 41-33. Detroit drops to 36-40. Shane Bieber improves to 2-0. Mike Fires drops to 5-4. The Reds defeated the Cubs 6-3 as they improved to 30-45. The Cubs dropped to 42-31. Luis Castillo improves to 5-8. Jose Quintana drops to 6-6. Rossiel Iglesias gets his 12th save of the year. 
The Dodgers defeated the Mets 5 to 2 as they improved to 39 and 35. The Mets dropped to 31 and 42. Alex Wood improves to 3 and 5. Zach Wheeler drops to 2 and 6. Kenley Jansen gets his 19th save of the year. The Orioles defeated the Braves 10 to 7 in 15 innings. This was a crazy game. The Orioles scored six runs in the top of the ninth. The Atlanta Braves come back to tie it at seven apiece in the bottom of the ninth. Then Manny Machado hits a big home run in the top of the 15th. And Jonathan Scope gets a big RBI single to make it a 10-7 final. Baltimore improves to 22-52. and 52. Atlanta drops to 43-31. and 31. Mike Wright Jr. improves to 1-0. and 0. Peter Moylan drops to 0-1. The Brewers defeated the Cardinals 2 to 1 as they improved to 45 and 30. St. Louis drops to 38 and 36. Corey Nebel improves to 1 and 0. Bud Norris drops to 3 and 2. Jesus Aguilar had the walk off homer in this game. Not only did he have the walk off homer, but Jack Flaherty had a no hitter through six in the third innings, I believe. And Jesus Aguilar hit the home run to break up the no hitter, ironically enough. The Rangers defeated the Twins 8 to 1 as they improved to 33 and 44. The Twins drop to 33 and 39. Mike Miner improves to 5 and 4. Fernando Romero drops to 3 and 3. Jesse Chavez gets his first save of the year, and ironically enough, that's six straight wins for the Texas Rangers. The Royals defeated the Astros 1 0 as they improved to 23 and 52. Houston drops to 50 and 27. Justin Grimm improves to 1 and 2. Ken Giles drops to 0 and 2. Tim Hill gets his first save of the year. I guess Hill's the new closer after the trading of. Calvin Herrera. The Rockies defeated the Marlins 11 to 3 as they improved to 38 and 38. The Marlins dropped to 29 and 47. John Gray improves to 7 and 7. Wei and Chen drops to 2 and 4. Game two of the doubleheader between the White Sox and the A's. The White Sox defeated the A's 6 to 4 as they improved to 25 and 50. Oakland drops to 39 and 37. Lucas Giolito improves to 5 and 7. Chris Bassett drops to 0 and 3. Joaquin Soria gets his 11th save of the year. The Angels defeated the Blue Jays 2 to 1 as they improved to 41 and 35. Toronto drops to 34 and 41. Andrew Heaney improves to 4 and 5. Marco Estrada drops to 4 and 7. Blaine Parker gets his ninth save of the year. The Padres defeated the Giants 6 to 2 as they improved to 35 and 43. San Francisco drops to 38 and 39. Clayton Richard improves to 7 and 6. Chris Stratton drops to 8 and 5. Today's games, you have Athletics White Sox at 2 o'clock. Daniel Magdan and Dylan Covey, Rangers Twins at 2 o'clock as well. Yavani Gallardo and Jake Odorizzi, 3 o'clock, Marlins Rockies, Trevor Richards and Tyler Anderson, 4 o'clock, Phillies Nationals, Aaron Nola and Eric Feed, Diamondbacks Pirates, Zach Greinke and Joe Musgrove, Padres Giants, Jordan Lyles and Andrew Suarez, Yankees raise on FS1. You have Sonny Gray and Wilmer Font. I do not know who's on the call for any of these games. Maybe Michael Kay and Brian Anderson again. That would be pretty cool. I'm going to say the Yankees win this game. Sonny Gray is much better on the road than he is at home. Wilmer Font had a nice game on Sunday in the Bronx against the Yankees, but I kind of think that was an aberration. The Yankees were caught up in all the old-timers' day festivities, so... I kind of think there's a little bit of emotion there, and this is a different day, and I think the Yankee offense breaks out a little bit here, and Sonny Gray gets some run support. Let's say 6-3 Yankees is your final score as the bullpen locks it down at the end. You also have Cardinals Brewers, Miles Miklas and Chase Anderson, Orioles Braves, Dylan Bundy and Julio Tehran, Cubs Reds. Luke Farrell, Anthony DeSclafani, Tigers Indians at 6 o'clock, Francisco Liriano and Trevor Bauer, Fox, Mariners, Red Sox, Mike Leak and Eduardo Rodriguez give me the Red Sox, Royals, Astros on Fox, Lance McCullers Jr. and Kennedy give me the Astros, Dodgers, Mets on Fox, Clayton Kershaw comes back against Jake DeGrom, give me the Dodgers, 9 o'clock, Blue Jays, Angels, you have Marcus Stroman and Hamid Borea. That's it for the podcast today. I'll be back tomorrow. I hope you guys have a great day, everybody.